Hi, I'm uh, Professor Neshaba, and I want to tell you a little bit about enthalpy versus internal energy. So the internal energy, um, as we know, that's just adding up all the internal kinetic and potential energy uh, that, a, that a system has. And by contrast, the enthalpy says, take that number we just calculated and add to it that product, which is, this is my system, it has a certain pressure and a certain volume. We multiply those two together and, uh, and add that to the internal energy and, and we get the enthalpy. So um, one thing that you can see right off the bat is that the enthalpy is generally bigger than the internal energy because we're adding a little bit to it. How about in terms of the differential equation of state? Well, here we have a, a picture of U as a function of temperature and volume. So it's the internal energy and a temperature volume state space. And uh, the slope and the temperature direction we call CV, the constant volume heat capacity. The slope in the, um, in the volume direction is called pi sub t. So that's what these surfaces uh, look like. And it's kind of described by that differential equation of state there. Um, a few things. Pi sub t is 0 for an ideal gas and generally not 0 for, um, for a real gas. And uh, CV uh, sort of tells us uh, when we are when we're heating up a substance isochorically, so along that sort of line that is at a constant volume, we know that CV is the proportionality constant between how much the temperature goes up and uh, how, much, how much heat went, went into the system. How does that work for, uh, for this uh, uh, scenario? Well, we like to think about the enthalpy in a temperature and pressure state space. And uh, it looks kind of similar. Uh, the slope in the temperature direction is uh, called CP, the constant pressure heat capacity. The slope in the pressure direction is a new quantity called mu sub t. That's uh, the uh, isothermal joule Thomson coefficient. Similarly, for an ideal gas, mu sub t is 0, and, and uh, that surface is, is flat in the pressure direction. Um, we also write a differential equation of state pretty similarly. Changes in the enthalpy are given by changes in the temperature times Cp, that slope, plus changes in the pressure uh, times uh, the isothermal joule thomson coefficient. And uh, what about that Cp? Well, we just define the heat capacity to be this way. If I'm going to be heating up my substance uh, while holding the, the, the pressure constant, that would be isobaric heating. Um, if the temperature goes up by a certain amount, then I multiply that by this constant, uh, or that number, C Cp, and that tells me how much heat uh, goes in or out. Last thing, um, going back to um, the internal energy in a volume temperature state space, the first law says something like this. Um, the uh, the uh, change in the internal energy, in general, is equal to the work done, plus the heat that goes in or out, but if we have isochoric heating, then uh, I could put a little subscript V there, and I say, that uh, that term goes away. And so the nice thing about this is that the change in the temperature, which gives me the heat that goes in and out, tells me directly about how much the internal energy changed. How does that work in enthalpy land? Well, it goes something like this. Um, we haven't proved this, but um, I can tell you that it's possible to show that under certain circumstances, a very similar thing works. Namely, once I figured out how much heat goes in, to the system by multiplying the temperature change by Cp, I can tell you that that heat that goes in is exactly equal to the amount that the enthalpy went up, um, which uh, it does follow from the first law, but it takes a few assumptions um, to, um, to, to uh, that goes into showing that, that that is true. Okay.